Hi, my name is Weston Mizumoto and I'm a two-time national champion for one-handed cubing uh, for 2011 and 2013. And this is going to be a video on how to get from the early stages when you're just starting to solve one-handed to the more advanced stages when you're maybe around 14, 13, 14 seconds. So I'm just going to go through a general overview of what I did when I was learning and maybe what I should have done differently because I have learned a lot over the, this uh, my one-handed solving. So one hand is different from most events because there's not like as much stuff as to learn per se as other events. It's a lot more just practicing. But that doesn't mean that it's just kind of mindlessly solving over and over. There's definitely certain things that you should practice more than others and different ways to practice and it's kind of tricky sometimes to know exactly what to practice. And so in general the ultimate goal of one-handed uh, solving is to be able to turn one-handed as close as possible to two-handed turns. A big misconception that people make is that what that means is that oh that just means you turn fast right? So I'm going to Every time I make a turn, I'm going to just do it as fast as I can, right? That's actually not very good. That won't, I mean, get, that'll get you like decently fast, but it won't get you, that's not how you get close to two-handed turning. See, the real difference between one-handed and two-handed turning is that since you have so many more fingers to use for two-handed turning, you don't have to pause in between the moves. And so that's where the real challenge of one-handed turning is. It's not how to turn the cube fast. Because honestly, like, turning one side one-handed, I mean, it doesn't matter if you use two hands or one hand, you're still just using one finger. The, the real challenge is to try to make the time in between those turns as small as possible. So instead of turning something like this, where you're like, just something like that, where like each movement is kind of like twitchy and you want it to be smoother and maybe the actual sides won't turn as, as fast but as long as something is always turning that's much better and that'll get you a lot faster just trust me on that one because as long as the pause in between the moves is small then you'll slowly be able to move faster and faster and then eventually this will be just as fast as that and actually I think my one-handed time was faster because I kind of screwed up two-handed but yeah that's besides the point so that's one of the common misconceptions is that people just try to turn each face really fast like this and that's that's quite bad another misconception that people often have is that when they're choosing a cube they say well you know I get tired when I, pra I practice one-handed so I'm going to use the loosest cube possible and in my opinion, that's, that's that's a very bad thing to do, because one hand again, one handed is not about turning a side fast. It's about turning uh, smoothly and really loose cubes don't help you turn smoothly. They just like they in fact make it harder to turn smoother because you end up just turn you just end up turning each of the sides too fast. So it's better to have a cube that's much more controllable. Um, maybe tighter than you'd like, maybe even tighter than you would do for two hands. Um, but that will be much more consistent and reliable for you when one hand is solving. Especially when you're in a competition and you're nervous, having a um, kind of gummier cube, in my opinion, is much, much better. Obviously, there are people who disagree with this and use really, really loose cubes. But from my experience, I can tell you that. I've used both in competition and I've had much better results with gummier cubes. And so this cube is the cube that I recommend for one-handed solving. It's a 55mm Zanchi and the lube that I use is Lubical. Uh, I use kind of a mixture of all three types of Lubical. There's like three viscosities that you can choose from, from cubical.us that I would recommend to buy. That's, I've tried so, tons of different lubes and that's the one that I feel is the best. Um, all of them are good. There's like gummy, speedy, and normal. I like them all. Uh, just kind of 
preference, I guess. And also hand strength. So now I'm going to go through some more detail about actual one-handed turning. So when you're practicing one-handed turning, um, if you're familiar with one-handed turning at all, you'll know that the bread and butter of one-handed turning is two gen solving. I would say like 85 to 90 percent of one-handed solving is like a bunch of RU stuff, a rotation, a bunch more RU stuff, rotation, rotation, these ro stuff, and then just RU rotation, RU rotation. So easily the first thing and the most important thing is to get really 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 good two gen turning and so what this means is uh, practicing a lot of two gen solving and this is what I did for like a long a very long time when I first saw, started one hand solving I would just like walk around my house like while I was eating while I was just sitting in the car doing whatever I would just constantly turning one handed uh, I mean, constantly turning two gen one handed just to get every single combination of moves down and that includes double turns so like the R2 triggers and stuff and it's also really helpful to practice like the, the, the four move patterns that you know like sexy move those come up a lot and uh, like universe sexy move um, some of these can be really hard, like that one's not easy. You know, you should be able to do those all pretty much flawlessly every time, and that'll make all of your F2L, and if you're doing cross correctly, most of your cross really, really, really smooth and really, really easy, uh, and most importantly, really reliable and consistent. Uh, I think. Reliability and consistency is something that's really, really underrated in one-handed solving. Where it doesn't, it's, um, because one-handed is kind of like a naturally kind of flaky event where, you know, if you get like a bad PLL and a bad OLL, then your time is, you know, you don't really have, there's a lot of variance and it's, it's probably going to be a bad time. So I think one thing when you're doing one-handed solving is you should always strive for the most reliable and the most consistent algorithm that you know that you're confident that you can be able to perform under pressure and high pressure situation where if you're at PLL and you look down and see 8 seconds you won't freak out and mess up yourself. So that's one of the things that you have to look out for all throughout one handed solving. You have to say well this might be slightly faster but is it going to be reliable? Is it Can I do this under a high pressure situation in a competition? Because that's what really matters. So after you're really comfortable with one-handed solving, obviously the next step is just RUD solving, which is basically the same thing, but just with Z rotations in between. And you can practice RUD scrambles too, that really helps, or just like RUD, just performing the actual scramble, not solving it. Um, because uh, it's a really common uh, move set that a lot of alg algorithms are, is RU RUD or RUL, which is the same thing. And honestly, like if you can do RU turns, you can do RUL or RUD. It's basically the same thing. The first real challenge comes when you're trying to incorporate uh, F turns. And you might say, well, why can't I just choose all my PLLs such that they don't have F turns? Well, I will talk about that a little bit later, but that's not always the best thing to do. And you're going to want to be able to perform awkward moves and not just be able to do RU moves. So. Especially like this, turns like this, um, you never, I haven't really gotten the hang of F2, that's pretty hard, and I've never really been in a situation that I need to use it, but that's the next thing you should be able to, to do comfortably. And obviously you would never do this in a real solve, but you should try to do like uh, RUF uh, scrambles, just for practice. Obviously I didn't. I didn't solve it with RUF there, because I'm bad, but that's not the point. Um, practicing RUF scrambles will be really, really, really helpful, and again, this move is not that hard, but it's unreliable, and that's like, that's the biggest problem with one-handed, so that if you can get this move to be reliable and safe, then that's a huge, huge benefit to you, because you can do so many things if you can do an F move like this, reliably and fast. And then the same thing goes for 
um, double turns, then you want to gonna try to get used to your double turns. You can practice stuff like this or like the the uh, four move trigger, but with all double turns. That's kind of hard, but again, see, like I dropped it up there. These are also things that are very hard to get consistent. They're not hard to do slow. They're they're not they're not too hard to do fast but they're hard to do under high pressure situations. A lot of times they do, your, the cube will just come flying out of your hand. So those are basically the main aspects of one-handed turning that you need to be able to um, master. Before you even think about like learning one-handed algorithms and stuff, I suggest you just focus on turning because that's really the important part because there's not always going to be a good algorithm out there. And sometimes you're just going to have to do awkward turns, especially maybe in cross or like if you use ZZ when you're doing uh, EO line, there's going to be awkward moves. And if you just can't do those, then you're going to have bad solves. And like I said, the most important thing is consistency, not, not necessarily speed. Another pitfall I see a lot of new one-handed cubers fall into is that as soon as they start uh, just practicing one-handed, they go and learn all of the one-handed algorithms, all the one-handed PLLs and OLLs, trying to look up, look them up right away. And my suggestion is that you hold off on that for a while until you really, really try and experiment with your two-handed algorithms and really try to see, is it possible for me to get this algorithm fast um, without you know having to go and learn new algorithms? Because a lot of times, the one-handed algorithms are going to be a little bit longer so at if if you can't execute them equally well the two-handed algorithms are going to be shorter and also it just develops um, a lot better turning technique and you're going to be a lot more well equipped to do more difficult turns that you know what almost guaranteed to come up eventually like there's obviously not a good case for everything so for like you know for ZBLL or some edge orientation case there's not always going to be a good case and if you don't develop this like awkward turn F moves or B moves or like double moves or I mean wide turns if you don't develop that technique then you're just not going to be able to do those algs and that's a real shame so it's really good it's a really good idea to just practice um, your normal algs and try to get really 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 good at executing them before you try and you know go and learn new elks for specifically for one-handed because like I was originally going to do that but and I learned like an RUDT perm but like I practiced the regular RUF one and I can actually do this much faster than I can do than I can do the RUD one just because I practice F move so much that it just comes so natural and it's easy and it's you know it's the same alg it's short, it's a, it's just a better alg in general and I can do it really fast and you know same thing with you know our perms like I can do this F like that the F in the beginning and a lot of times like people will have algorithms that have one F move. And since they can't do it, they have to like rotate, do the move, rotate again, and that's just that's just so bad. It like makes me cringe because it's two rotations for one move, and if you just took the time to practice these moves, like you'd be so much faster. It's like it's ridiculous to me that people would like rotate twice to do one move. Like, ugh, I can't I can't imagine do, doing that. And you know, like as far as turning goes, there aren't a ton of like there's not a ton ton of stuff to talk about. It's mostly just practicing and like practicing what's difficult for you like if you can't do something just practice it a ton like you don't even have to like just sit there and practice it like because that's boring just like do something else and just do that move over and over and over and over again until you can do it like without even thinking so that's really what most of OH turning is is just um, figuring out what you can't do learning to do it and just keep uh, continue to do that until you can do everything that you want yeah, there, there really are no um, shortcuts or special tricks to get fast at always turning. It's just like a, a lot of hard work. I mean, maybe it's not hard work, but it's it's a lot of practice. I wouldn't really call turning Rubik's Cube hard work, but it's a lot of practice. Um, and it's not, you can't just like 
sit down one day and learn a bunch of algs and all of a sudden you're fast. Because like even if even if you learn all the good one head algs, uh like you won't be fast at it even if unless you have good OH turning. And in all the situations where you can't use those algs, you're gonna be slow if you don't develop like beyond your R U moves. Although most of one handed uh turning is R U, like awkward turns do come up like you know, frequently enough that you should be concerned about them and take necessary precautions so you don't get bogged down by them. And as far as like algorithm sets go, um, obviously like the more algorithms you know, the better. Uh, but you know, like it's not necessary necessary to know like you know ZB or whatever. Like I know some, I use some COLL. I don't use all the cases. Like I don't use the soons because, you know. Why would I ever use? Why do I need to do COLL when I can just do that? When, because especially because like um, uh, like most of the diagonal cases are not even that bad. So like, like the diagonal, most of the diagonal cases aren't like the ends aren't bad because they're RUL both ends. Uh, y is pretty good, like I just showed you. Um, e is the worst one, but it's still like you know, it's not that bad. Uh, then yeah, V is not bad either. Um, even for, like another thing that that's kind of unique to my solving is that uh, like I don't really try to avoid uh, this kind of stuff because I've just practiced these algs so much. Like I just I practice the dot L so much that I don't. It, like it's not that much slower so I don't need to bother with edge control like I'll do it if it's like super convenient or if I see that it'll give me an oil skip but I've just practiced those dot algorithms so much that I don't need to worry about edge control and that's you know same thing with the corner case I don't really need to worry too much about like skipping steps or like uh, affecting the next step because I practiced everything so much that there are so few bad cases that like it's kind of pointless to like learn tons of algos like like I could I could go and learn all of the edge orientation cases to avoid all everything but you know the T on top when when F two L is done but you know that that won't really speed me up it might even slow me down because now I have awkward moves when I'm inserting my last pair but since I practiced the OLL so much. Um, even especially the dot ones, like well, that was kind of bad, but I'm not really warmed up. But yeah, see, that was like still it's still decent. Like I've just practiced those so much that um, you know it, I think it's better to just practice your algs instead of learning more algs to um, to get around the algs that you haven't practiced. So I think that's really what you should be aiming for when with your solving one-handed. It's not like just avoiding all the things that you're bad at. It's just getting good at one-handed turning. And I think that's I think that's the really cool part about one-handed is that you know eventually you can turn faster one-handed than you can two-handed. Like this algorithm, it's easier for me one-handed than it is two-handed. And I've timed it. I have a video on a channel somewhere that like I just do them side by side and my 100 is faster and I think that's really what 100 is all about um, some people obviously believe that you know just learn a bunch of algs and then you only get nice cases but I kind of disagree with that and I think ultimately in the long run you'll get better results if you just get really 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 good at your turning style and you know everything that I said it wasn't like that con concrete things that like oh first you learn this then you learn this then you learn this but that's not really how OH works it's not like there's like a step by step progression because like it'll vary depending on your method depending on how much you know where you are in solving um, but the things that I talked about are are going to be the same no matter at what level you are whereas just confronting all the difficult things head on and just um, not trying to make get the easy way around to make like the temporary quick fix. So thanks for watching and see you next time.